we are back for round 2, winning the die roll again, playing first again. This hand is somewhat awkward with doorkeeper and arrest being perfectly castable, but the gatekeepers not being castable and of course not going to trigger. I still don't think that we mulligan such a hand. We do need a black source, but we can't always expect our hands to have all the mana we need and I think this has sufficient early game that we are going to keep it. Opponent goes down to 6 and keep, so maybe some mana troubles as well. Probably should have played the planes first here, but because we don't have... We, ha we were missing both a, a, a black source and the Tithe Drinker itself to cast it probably didn't matter too much. I think we can delay the Doorkeeper here for at least one turn to not give our opponent the information that we have an 0-4 blocker. Oh. Well, that was a, a great move. We denied our opponent the information of having an 0-4 blocker but took 3 damage in the process, so we should probably keep that in mind when playing against black that black red has two mana haste creature now so that was definitely unnecessary on my part. Slate Street Ruffian not really a card we have to be too concerned about. We do a guild gate so I'm going to try to delay the gatekeepers for a little bit. We are only taking two currently so Let's see how this develops. A 3 to X or creature is something that I would love to kill with the gatekeepers. Demir Key Rune is not a big help, but it's a good blocker, to be honest, so we could do here is just try to block with the key rune because it kills the syndicate enforcer if our opponent decides to attack with it. We could also just run out the gatekeepers here but waiting just has quite a lot of upside I feel like. Okay, now we are really in trouble. Opponent is going to extra this, and then we have a 4 4 first strike haste creature that gives other creatures with plus one plus one counters haste as well. So I fully expect this to be, yeah, to be unleashed here. Hoping that the enforcer comes in there because it was the one card that we will, would have trouble beating otherwise. So not all is lost. It still sucks that we took the additional damage at the beginning. Uh, that could be very relevant, but at least we learned something. Still no guild gates, but at this point it's correct to just arrest the Blood Witch anyway. And then we are back to taking 2 damage a turn. But any unleashed creature now is going to have haste as well. And that's, that probably spells doom for us. And of course we have to blame ourselves, or I, I have to blame myself a little bit as well. With the information we have now, I, it was definitely not correct to not play doorkeeper on turn 2. But also it didn't look too smart to keep back the gatekeepers for so long. On the other hand, I don't think that we would have beaten the Blood Witch followed by a hasty spawn anyway. Okay, so just basically a lot of aggression coming our way with 
we saw at least two Slate Street Ruffians, which aren't amazing, but the rema remaining cards look pretty powerful. I still don't see how boarding any of these cards would help us, though. It's fine to buy a turn with Gridlock, but if you aren't applying pressure, it doesn't really help you at all. And one other thing that we have to be honest about is that keeping that hand was probably a little loose with the island and three planes. I thought that we would be fine in in a slow matchup, but we, we were still messing black for that. Uh, we, we are facing a very aggressive deck, so we have to be a little more conservative with which hands we want to keep. I'm not going to board anything. Maybe we'll find out more about our opponent's deck. But we do have a lot of cards that are good against aggressive decks, so hopefully we can draw some of them. This is our starting hand, and of course that's not going to work. So let's mulligan to 6. Our opponent is down to 6 as well. Now, we have a Demir Guildgate and an Island, but four uncastable cards against an aggressive deck in our hand. That's keeping this hand is a pretty good pretty easy way to lose the match, I feel like. It sucks to go down to 5 on the play, but I, s I think we do have to do it. And this hand at least looks a lot better, so I'm not going to go down to 4. Opponent is also down to 5, so it's going to be interesting. This time we might have a chance to trigger the gatekeepers, which could, which could be huge. Um, we could also ambush something with Hussar Patrol. But this is assuming that we get to a point where all of our 4 and 5 mana spells are relevant. Every turn that goes by where our opponent doesn't play anything is absolutely huge for us. And now I'm feeling a lot better. Dutiful Thrall, not a land, but great draw nonetheless. So, blocking Slate, Slate Street Ruffian doesn't seem like a good idea at this point because I don't have a single card that I want to discard. So I'm going to wait on that a little bit. Swamp Rock, that's good to know. Meaning that we are going to Maybe not even play out another Swamp here. I decided to just go for the Hussar Patrol because it does apply some pressure. And I don't really have a way to control his board right now. So going on the offensive definitely feels right here. It's an interesting block. So potentially going to scavenge onto the ruffian. It's not even particularly good. Especially once we are down to zero cards, it's not going to do anything else. And we also have the smite to punish that. So yeah, not not really a not really a big deal. We do take some more damage here because we don't actually have the mana to do anything. Demir Charm. Now that's a card that we really don't want to discard. Playing, casting the Smite on the 4-4 four, four 
has to be correct and I have a feeling that discarding the gatekeepers is probably the way to go. Now... Yeah, the gatekeepers don't even stop his big guys at all. Alternatively, we could just try to empty our hand, but that's kind of difficult with, with these spells here. Also going to play this aggressively again, because I want to deal as much damage as possible. But of course that's a little bit risky against some cards you might have here. So now reconsidering the gatekeepers in play do give me a lot more options than having the Demir Charm in hand. So it might be might be better to just say goodbye to the Demir Charm and get the gatekeepers into play. It really depends on the remainder of his hand, really. If Demir Charm has a target, it's going to be great to have it, but if not, it's really not that important. So I'm going to drop the gatekeepers. And if our opponent has the 4-4 four, four, first strike haste witch again, then at least we can smite it. Otherwise, we are going to discard the Demir Charm and be fine. So what we can do here is double block and discard the Demir Charm anyway. And it might entice our opponent to play a removal spell on one of our creatures. So the ordering is Hussar Patrol first, of course, it has Vigilance, so opponent wants to kill that if possible. Now it's actually interesting if we just want to let this resolve or not. We do get rid of his 4-4 at the cost of a Hussar Patrol and keeping the smite around with a dutiful Thrall in play has to be better. So it's kind of sad to lose our Vigilance creature but I think that was an okay trade for us. Yep, and this is a card that we can use or smite against. But Beautiful Thrall, of course, also a good way to block it here. We did draw a nice card in Call of the Nightwing. And we are going to use Cypher on Steeple Rock. Steeple Rock being the card that we want to survive here anyway, and it's very likely that it does. Electricry, as always, being though basically the one card that deals with it, but it looks like that's not happening. Although our opponent could, could untap and electricry for the for the full blowout. We could do the a double block again, which should make our opponent wanting to use a removal spell on one of our lesser creatures. And if he doesn't, then we are still fine with the traits we are we are getting here. Don't think that we are risking much by giving up one of our flyers. At the at the worst case we are we need one more turn to kill him because we have uh, we don't have a two turn clock anymore with a one two flyer on his side the one one horrors wouldn't even have been able to attack so nothing lost there tithe drinker is nice especially because we are going to extort off call of the night wing here We're never able to keep open the black mana for the Dutiful Thrall, but so far that hasn't been a problem at all. Okay, yeah, that was uh, pretty convincing 
from our side of the table. We are facing multiple sewer shamblers with three, three swamps in our deck, but don't think that we can cut down on the number of swamps. We do need them at some point anyway. And trying to you play more of the keystones, uh, clue stones instead is probably not going to work out. Fencing is kind of nice against one toughness creatures, but and Voidborg does work well against scavenge, but I think that's a bit too optimistic if you ask me. Voidborg on the gatekeepers could be absolutely amazing because if we ever get the two guild gates and the gatekeepers, it's going to be providing a lot of value. I still think that this is probably the setup that we want to be using and we have to be a bit careful with the swamps so it's possible that we want this that we want to cut one swamp for another basic land to make his swamp walk creatures even worse but if we don't draw a black guild gate then we won't be able to cast our spells so it's it's really a double-edged sword. Now, evasive creatures are very good against us. This is something that we have to keep in mind. So, otherwise, I wouldn't really bother with uh, with the swamp count. But because they are, we might actually want to do something about that. So, it would probably have to be an island that we play additionally, which is kind of bad. Uh, with the whole extort plan, but to be honest, that's not super important. Alternatively, we could board in a clue stone, but a boarding in a clue stone on a draw against an aggressive deck just doesn't feel right. I think we are just going to try it with three swarms, three swarms, and then see if we can make it. Not keep a loose hand like in game one. Okay, our opponent is going first, which was to be expected, and is keeping seven. We have one guild gate for our red splash, and our curve starts at four with two uncastable cards. Yeah, talking about loose hands, uh, this is definitely not a great, great hand. It does have some potential, though. I still think that we have to ship it back as tough as that is because some of his more aggressive draws are just going to kill this hand without us being able to do anything. So let's try six instead. Demir Guild Gate Planes and then a collection of the most powerful cards in our deck. So yeah that's that has to be it. We do need a third land but then we already have Hover Barrier and the rest. So, yeah, this isn't looking too bad. We did draw a Swamp, which I'm not going to play yet. Because of the, the Swamp Walk. But if we don't draw another land, then we will be forced to play it, of course. Dutiful Thrill. Dutiful Thrill is basically worthless against the ruffian so putting out the hover barrier putting the hover barrier out there help protects us from the from the haste witch just as well and should be a great card there's a forest that's interesting with any land the skymark rock becomes active and if we if we untap with it we're going to look very very good here 5 4 trample can't block against hover barrier we do a tithe drinker so we are potentially risking our hover barrier if our opponent has anything but then we can still arrest it next turn if you arrest the giant now we aren't really developing our board, so let's get the Tithe Drinker out there. And uh, potentially we might even have to block Slate Street Ruffian, but let's hope that's not the that's not the case. 
Another card that our opponent could potentially have here is is the Blood Witch just to get in for more damage. Riot Gear. Okay, that's also interesting. Riot Gear making the Blood Fray Giant 6 6 to get past Hover Barrier. So we could potentially save a lot of damage here by blocking with the barrier, but I think it's too important to keep it around. It does dominate basically everything he can throw at us, but I'm kind of interested in just blocking the ruffian with the tithe drinker because we will be forced to arrest next turn and if we ever draw lands we are in good shape also but we don't want to take too much damage especially if we, want, if we are taking six from the giant here also the ruffian could always get become a three four with the riot gear so we kind of have to play around that by blocking here even though it, it really hurts uh, losing two creatures here and I think if we have Hover Hover Barrier in play, that we can discard the Dutiful Thrall. Even though we are risking to be screwed for a little while if we don't draw a land. So there is there's some risk involved, but I think we can we can take it. Another way to have uh, gone about things would have been to keep the Tithe Drinker around with the argument that we could Call of the Nightwing it, and it has lifelink. But the fact that the Ruffian would have become a 3-4 uh, scared me quite a bit. Not sure if, if that was that was correct, though. We aren't looking too bad here if we draw into our fourth land 5-2 cobble brood so that's another creature that gets past the hover barrier when equipped and we didn't draw a land so call of the nightwing would be a very nice answer to cobble brood just giving us blockers as many blockers as we want and I feel like we, we are forced to, to take the damage here if Cobblewood becomes equipped. Okay, our opponent drawing two cards and losing two in the process. It looks like he found the land he was looking for. It's kind of a greedy play because if that fails, he isn't dealing he isn't dealing any damage as opposed to six. Okay, things aren't looking too great, but yeah, that's because we discarded the Dutiful Thrall. Uh, that might cost us, but we can still we can still come back from, from the position we are in with a single land. We can't go down to two against a, a Rakdos deck, basically. That's also on six cards. And Doorkeeper wasn't doing much for us anyway. So now we get the Swamp Walk action as well. And a Dagger Drome Imp to block the Wind Drake. Demir Kirun is the slowest possible land. And we are going to be forced to stay back here. I'm afraid that we aren't winning this game. But I don't know if, if having the Dutiful Thrall would have, would have been so much better because it is so expensive to regenerate when you are stuck on, on lands already. But of course now we have a problem with the Cobble Boot being too large to block this turn. The Sewer Shamble being evasive and the Dagodrome Imp being the only creature that we really dominate on this board. So we are definitely taking two here, so we have to block the Cobble Brood. If we block it with Wind Drake, then we need 
a new blocker for dagger drome in pretty soon we do have the gatekeepers that could do some work but we still don't have a way to deal with cobble boot at all call of the nightwing on wind drake would have been one of these options and it might still be the best one but even the just the option of equipping riot gear to dagger drome it makes it very difficult for us to really do much of anything here our best bet is probably Skymark Rock, but I don't really see how we are surviving this onslaught with the Skymark Rock. Because we'll we'll be forced to chump lock the cobble boot twice and then Well, the right gear has to go can only be on one creature, so maybe we get to bounce Cobble Boot or Dagger Drum Imp or Sewer Shambler and survive that way. It's not it's not super likely, but it's something that could work. So I'm going to block with Hover Barrier here because Wind Drake at least has the chance of killing a Cobble Boot later on. Death Red Chain. Yeah, that's going to kill us. We definitely made a mistake in game one keeping that hand and not playing the gatekeeper but I'm not sure if we would have won it would have won it and here the discarding the dutiful thrall was most likely a mistake but I still think that it would have been difficult now our opponent is mind running us and he's basically threatening lethal next turn which we almost surely aren't going to do anything about but let's see what we draw here. Now the cobble boot is still a large problem and I think that our opponent is threatening lethal. If he equips the dagger drum imp, we need to block the cobble boot and the dagger drum imp to survive so well yeah that's not not necessarily lethal but with death by chain it's basically over uh there's a grisly spectacle so yeah no chance there good games and sadly we won't make the finals of our first dragon's maze draft okay so a lot of the things that we tried with our deck didn't really come into play. Uh, we didn't get to see the Blast of Genius in action. We never triggered the Gatekeepers, so that's something to keep in mind uh, considering that we first picked it out of the Dragon's Maze pack. We Otherwise I think we had a powerful deck, but it wasn't overly focused, so that's something uh, that could be un improved on definitely. This the, the deck that we beat in round one was definitely weaker, but even though the cards a lot of the cards that our opponent played this game didn't look spectacular, his deck had a very focused game plan and a pretty good matchup against ours. Now if what is it called? Toil Trouble, I believe. If Toil Trouble doesn't um give our opponent a land, or we decide on keeping back Dutiful Thrall, uh, holding Dutiful Thrall rather than one of the four drops. Uh, this game might end differently, but our opponent just had so much more action than we did. I feel that um, there wasn't really much we could do. So it still holds that the mana bases are one of the key factors in this limited format, and that's something that we're going to take even greater care for in the next episode. Wrapping up, I'm Simon Gartzen. This has been Simon Says, the first Dragon's Maze episode. You can find me on mtgoacademy.com. Also on Twitter, I'm at Simon Gartzen with OE. And well, let me know what you think in the comments and see you next time. Bye bye.